Deacon Susan, did any of them say they were looking forward to the sermon? No, they didn't. I'm sorry. Mm. Ah, they probably speak for many people. <laughs> well, maybe this will change your mind. There we go. It's back. Uh, for those of you who are visiting and wondering what's wrong with me, that, that's a whole other sermon altogether. But uh, I know I could take my mask off because, like good Lutherans, you've left the, the, the pews clear here. So I think I, I can project without fear of uh, spreading. So also, I just wanted to wear the mustache one more time. I, uh, have you ever said something and hoping that somebody will then encourage you? Like, uh, for instance, when this week I said, boy, it sure would be nice to make this a real mustache, don't you think? And I said that to my wife, hoping that she would agree. She didn't really respond to that. She just looked at me like she does. And so this will, I just wanted to live in the moment of the mustache, the mustache moment, just a little bit longer. Now, some of you may be wondering, why do I have a mustache on? Well, uh, for the last few weeks, including today, we've been having a sermon series called lasso lessons based on the show Ted Lasso and I'm happy to say I am a big fan of the show I'm also very proud that many of the creators and people on it received much deserved Emmys over the last week or so and so uh, I'm glad to note that it's a very popular show and again I encourage you for those of you who have Apple Plus to check it out uh, and please if you're under 18 just just wait till you're 18 Make it 25. Just wait till you're 25 to watch it. So let me start out by telling you about a particular episode of Ted Lasso that has me wanting to talk to you about hope. In episode 10 of the first season, Coach Lasso's team, AFC Richmond, the Greyhounds, they're facing relegation. Now, in sports leagues such as the English Premier League, that's the top professional soccer league in England, Promotion and relegation is a process where teams are transferred between multiple divisions based on their performance for the completed season. If I can use maybe in college, imagine if, let's say, your favorite team in the ACC finished dead last, that would mean that they would be going from Division 1A, the next year they would be Division 1AA, kind of like that. So. Richmond is faced with the real problem of dropping from the top league down to the next one. Now, why is this important? Well, of course, there is team pride. Nobody likes to see their team finish last or among the worst in a league. But the real reason is money. On average, relegation can cost a soccer club $255 million in revenue. Let me repeat that, $255 million revenue. So Richmond is facing relegation, and they are about to play Manchester City. Now, Man City is a powerhouse team, a legitimate powerhouse team, and so they have a big obstacle. At the local pub, the local fans are already thanking Coach Lasso and assuming they've already lost and are going to be relegated. So Coach Lasso asks, hey, where is the hope? And May, the bar owner, says, it's the hope that kills you. It's the hope that kills you. That phrase is used in English football and refers to the thought that it's best for fans not to have high expectations or hope. That way, when failure happens, what it eventually does, it doesn't hurt as much. Now, I remember while I was at North Carolina State, my friends and I went to a basketball game against North Carolina. Both teams were ranked at the time, and the crowd was into it very loud. We were screaming. There's the tip-off, and Carolina quickly scores the first basket, and my friend Scott yells, Oh, my God, we're going to lose. <laughs> Sadly, it's the hope that kills you is not just a phrase used in sports. It's used quite often in churches, especially over the last 19 going on 20 months. 
think for a moment all that we have been through since March of 2020. We were dealt with and are continuing to deal with a deadly virus, racial injustice, protests and riots, an election that in some people's mind will never end, an insurrection in our very own capital, arguments over critical race theory, a vaccine miracle, a deadly virus variant, an anti-vaccine battle, natural disasters, Afghanistan, and over the last month and a half, we've had many of our friends and family at St. Paul pass away. Now, I just listed 12, a dozen events that if we were dealing with one of them, we could weather the storm. But when all 12 are hitting us at the same time, that is a lot to handle. And to top that off, we have worries about what church will look like during COVID, after COVID. Will people come back? Will people continue to give financially to the church? Will people miss coming to church? Suddenly, it feels like our hope has been relegated, demoted. So what do we do when our hope is relegated? Well, let's let Coach Lasso answer that. I've been practicing his accent, but I'm, I'm just not going to do it. Uh, I don't mean to ha have you guys do like this, but he says, I've been hearing this phrase y'all got over here that I ain't too crazy about. It's the hope that kills you. Y'all know what? I disagree, you know? I think it's the lack of hope that comes and gets you. See, I believe in hope. I believe in belief. So to echo Coach Lasso, let me give you your Lasso lesson. When all else fails, hope does not. When all else fails, hope does not. Far too often we act like God is a sports team, a team that will either make us very happy or crush our spirits. But God is not a sports team. God is not someone who disappoints. God does not take away our hope. God gives us hope. That hope can be seen throughout our readings today. Let me share some of those readings for you again. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wine strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. This from Paul. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand, and we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. And then Jesus says, Remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Each passage was written and shared and heard at a time when people were facing defeat, be it the Israelites who were facing exile, or a community like Paul's facing infighting, or a group of disciples facing an uncertain future. Each person in our reading was given hope, and each person here today is given that same hope. There is hope that Paul says shows up even in times of pain and chaos. A hope that, as Paul says, does not disappoint. 
even when we disappoint God, God does not disappoint us. And there is the hope that Jesus promises that wherever his disciples go, he goes with them. And he will be with them always. If death could not keep Jesus away from his brothers, nothing and no one will. We need to keep that in mind here at St. Paul's because we have gone through a very tough month with beloved members and friends passing away. Eleanor, Josephine, Peg, Clarence, Bill, Ted, Louise. We will miss them, but we will see them again. In our liturgy, it says, when we were baptized in Christ Jesus, we were baptized into his death. We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. That's certainty. That's hope. And it comes from Jesus. And this is the message of communion that I want you to hear today. The sacrament, Jesus' body and blood, the bread and the wine, the sacrament is a reminder of that hope. Hope is found in a meal that welcomes one and all, a meal where death and sin are not invited, where death and sin are relegated, and hope is promoted. Let me give you some examples. Over the summer, there were concerns over our financial future. We're not alone. Every church that I know is going through the same reality and problems that we are. But then, Hallmark called, Netflix called, Amazon called, and thanks to our director right here, uh, St. Paul Studio, we opened our doors to these various studios to film or to have base camp, and within a matter of about two months, our church was gifted with over $14,000. And the future looks pretty good for more. We also had a successful special appeal, Hearing God's Word. A new sound system is on its way. It's back ordered, so probably by 2037, it'll be up and running. But our goal was achieved. We have members stepping up in their giving. Members who have offered extra gifts to cover insurance and security upgrades. And just yesterday, we received a wonderful financial gift to help with the exterior of our sanctuary. When I told Grover that, he did a cartwheel and a backflip. I wish you all had seen it, but he did it very well. I give it about 9.8. Okay, so that's, that's financial hope. But let, let's get to servant hope. We continue to provide meals for our unsheltered brothers and sisters. Through our partnership and through our friendship with the feast gathering, there has been food, new clothes, and warm showers. We continue to provide meals for families facing homelessness or domestic violence situations. We have collected needed items for Mother Hubbard's cupboard. We have donated over $2,600 to support the Texas Gulf Coast Synod who are helping churches in their synod in the aftermath of Hurricane Ida. We made and sent masks to people in need. We made and sent quilts to hurricane victims. We offered vaccinations to not only the church but to the community. We continue to provide home communion, the sacrament of hope, to our homebound members. Just spoke to one this week who is so appreciative of the time and the effort and the connection it makes. And we continue to welcome new members and we have new faces, new visitors every week. And again, for those of you visiting today, thank you for coming. And for those of you watching, thank you for watching. People have kept their connection with God because of the hard work of St. Paul's and through the grace, only through the grace of God. Now, there is a song that my daughter Maddie 
demands, I do mean demands, that I play when we're in the car together. And it's from a Christian artist named Ellie Holcomb. The song she loves is called Find You Here. And I want to share with you some words from that song that I believe go along with the certainty that God's hope is here. Here in the middle of the lonely night, here in the middle of the losing fight, you're here in the middle of the deep regret, here when the healing hasn't happened yet, here in the middle of the desert place, here in the middle when I cannot see your face, here in the middle with your outstretched arms, you can see my pain and it breaks your heart. And I didn't know I'd find you here in the middle of my deepest fear, but you were drawing near. You were overwhelming me with peace. So I lift my voice and sing, you're going to carry me through everything. There is never a moment or place where we are without hope. God makes sure of that. So this week, please focus on the hope that God has placed in your life. Focus on the hope that you can give to someone else. And focus on the hope that you can bring to this church community. So, to those poor fans of AFC Richmond, to those of us who need assurance and grace, hope does not kill you. Hope keeps you alive. When all else fails, hope does not. Amen.